Foxes are often portrayed as deceptive, cunning, and mischievous by folklore. This is because of their incredible ability to adapt to almost any habitat. It is no surprise that the red fox is found almost anywhere on Earth above the Northern Hemisphere, and is so amazing at adapting, when humans brought them to environments they have never seen before, they can thrive there. The red fox is active at different times throughout the day. Foxes that live in the country or in the woods are primarily nocturnal, but foxes found in urban areas have been observed to be more active during the day than most foxes. Red foxes will mark a territory for themselves and will guard it from other foxes. The red fox is primarily solitary, but have been observed to hunt together in small family groups. Despite looking quite large, the red fox only weighs 10 to 15 pounds, males being larger than females. This is about the size of your average house cat, meaning that in most encounters where a fox meets a cat, the cat can usually scare off the fox. Breeding season for the red fox starts in January and ends in March. When the fox finds a mate, they usually mate for life. The male will defend the territory from other foxes, although sometimes other males that are submissive to him can stay in his territory. The female will then either dig or more commonly use a burrow from another animal as a den to have her pups. The female usually has multiple dens prepared in case one of them gets discovered by a predator. The female will have 1 to 11 pups in a single litter. When the pups are born, they are blind and deaf and completely rely on their mother's milk for food. The mother will stay with the pups and the male will provide food for her. After about a month, the pups will come out of the den to explore. They will start trying solid food and will eat regurgitated meat that their parents bring. Although they are not fully weaned until they are 12 weeks old, at this point the parents will start bringing back prey that is still alive. The pups will play with the prey. This is important in building the confidence and practice for the pups to kill their own prey. They will also come with their parents on foraging trips. Then, at late summer or early autumn, if the pups feel like they can establish a territory, the pups will disperse. Males leave first and usually travel farther than females. However, it is not unusual for the pups to stick with their parents and form a family group in order to catch more food. The red fox is an omnivore. They eat fruits and seeds, but will actively hunt animals like rodents, squirrels, birds, bird eggs, insects, turtles, turtle eggs, and snakes. The red fox has a very good hearing and sense of smell. They usually try to find prey by listening for it and sniffing it out. Their sense of hearing is so good that during the winter, they can hear a vole moving under many feet of snow. When they pinpoint the vole's exact location, they pounce into the snow, face first, and try to grab it. Since finding food is hard for the red fox, they will bury excessive food in caches where they will come back to when they are low on food. As an adult, the red fox has very few predators. Coyotes are their top concern. Coyotes do not tolerate the red fox and will drive them off or kill any foxes that are in their territory. They see the foxes as competition for food. Since the coyotes are much bigger than the red fox, they can easily kill them. As pups, they are preyed upon by birds of prey and coyotes. The only main defense of the red fox is to run away or try to avoid coyotes altogether. In 1855, the European colonists brought the red fox to Australia. 
They set the foxes free and planned to use them for recreational hunting. The red fox thrived there and established itself as a population. This is not a good thing. Since they aren't native to Australia, they very easily eat many of the native small rodents and birds there. This, along with feral cats, is driving many species to extinction. The Australian government has been trying to contain the problem, but to little success, as even with excessive hunting, where they are native, the population has thrived.